Book of Psalm, chapter 103. Book of Psalm, chapter 103. Psalm 103. We're going to read the whole chapter, Psalm 103. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourish, flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Pastor Shrap, can you pray for the message? suffering and patience with us. We ask that you would uh, move upon the day and the things that he brings to us to prick our hearts and draw us close to Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, but thank you for it in advance and ask that every uh, ear would be attentive and every heart would be uh, turned close to God than ever before. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tired of the message is Thanksgiving your spiritual thermometer, thanksgiving, your spiritual thermometer. We understand that there's coronavirus going on, and one of the main signs that people check through airports is you know, their temperature levels. You know, if you have high fever and you're coming from different country, especially from China, you know, you'll be quarantined. Why? Because there's a danger. When you look at your Christian life, you need to check your thanksgiving thermometer. A lot of times you go days and days without thinking about certain things that you should be thankful for. I will be going over some of those things. And if you are a person who's been giving thanks for all the points that you know I present, then I'm sure that your health is pretty good, spiritual health. However, if you haven't been, then you're sick and you might not know it until it's too late. There's a person named Viktor Frankl. He's a concentration camp survivor. And you could imagine people who's in concentration camp back in the day. He said this, Every everything can be taken from a man but one thing, 
to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's way. Whatever situation you're in, there's one thing that you could control. It might not be the weather, it might not be your finance, it might not be your health, but one thing that you could control is your attitude. Your attitude will determine what kind of day you're going to have today. For example, if you came to church today with good attitude, you're going to have a good result. If you came to church with bad attitude, you're going to have bad results. Simple as that. If you go to school with good attitude, I'm sure you'll learn more. If you go to school with bad attitude, you're not going to learn as much. If you drive with a good attitude, even though you know, there are crazy drivers out there in SoCal, you'll, you'll be good. However, if you go out there with bad attitude, you know, even though you're a Christian, Bible-believing Christian, words that come out of your mouth probably can't utter in front of normal people. There was a, when it comes to Thanksgiving, it's something that's really, really, really important, but something that we really, really, really neglect all the time. Sometimes your life's in the way. Sometimes your work's in the way. Sometimes your relationships are, relationships are on the way. There was a story. Polish railway worker named John, or Jan Gerzewski, and he was hit by a train back in 1988. He lived, he survived, however, but barely, and he was in a coma for 19 years. So think about it, from 1988 all the way to 2007, he was in coma. But he woke up in 2007 to a whole new world. Think about it. Back in 1988, think about, you know, Poland, right? There was a communist regime. And when he woke up, everything was so different. Imagine if you, you know, for unfortunate reasons, you have to be in a coma for the next 20 years and you wake up. You know, how different would the world be? He remembered back then, back in 1988, meat was rationed and there were huge lines at every near gas stations where they have to get their food. However, 19 years later, after he woke up, he saw a free nation where he said there were multiple people on the streets with cell phones. You know, back in 1988, there were no cell phones. He wakes up and then he sees all these people. However, one thing he says is this, and he puzzled him. What amazes me is all these people who walk around with their mobile phones, and yet they never stop complaining. Think about it. When you hear people's conversation on your cell phone, a lot of times it's like all your complaints. You know, like you talk to your loved ones, hey, such a horrible day at work today, such a horrible day at school. You know, a lot of things. A lot of times you're just so drawn to, you know, negative stuff. You know, all this, you know, worldly things going on. You forget to be thankful. And a lot of times if you look at yourself, you're most likely a critical person, complainer. You know, everybody loves to gossip, right? I guess, you know, all of you are because you have, no one said no, right? <laughs> so you, you like to gossip. Why? Because you enjoy, you know, negativeness. When you look at the news, it's all about negativity, right? Everything's negative because people will not watch positive, good things on the news. And God forbid, you know, if news start talking about, you know, godly stuff, people will turn the channels right away, change the channels. As you look at your life today, just remember, you know, am I a person that's giving thanksgiving all the time? Or am I a person who's constantly bickering, complaining, you know, always looking for something to murmur about? There are two types of people, right? People who always tries to look for some air. And there's always someone who tries to look something good. And majority of the people fall into the first one. They're always glass half full. Right? 
they can never be satisfied. One of the common characteristics of someone who's you know, unthankful, they're never satisfied. Why do you think that gamblers lose everything? Because they're never satisfied. And people, you know, people, why do you think Las Vegas makes money? They use that to their advantage. You know, people might win some money gambling, but they're never satisfied. So same thing in your spiritual life and same thing in your physical life. Since you're not satisfied with what you have, you always will be grumbling. You'll always be groaning, murmuring, complaining. That's why there are no faces in here with complete joy. Why? Because there's something in your life you keep on bickering about, right? When you should pray it on God's table, when you should let God take care of everything. But no, you're just in your mind, like you become self-righteous. You're like, man, I don't deserve this. I shouldn't be living like this. No, why does this happen to me? With that kind of attitude, you're just like a little baby, right? Babies are not born saying thank you. What do they do? Babies always cry, cry, cry. And they just want and want and want. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a, like, a really thankful baby, you know? <laughs> they always are wanting something. Then spiritually speaking, you know, after you're born again, you're saved through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're a baby, and you have to grow. But instead, you're at the same state. You've been there for a long time. You just can't grow. Why? Because you're not getting rid of that first trait, you know, being unthankful. You got to be thankful. There was a, everybody knows, you heard of Matthew Henry, right? He said this. He was robbed. Right? You know, it's not a good day, right? He was robbed by thieves, right? And he wrote these memorable words in his diary. After the day he got robbed, he said, let me be thankful first because I have never been robbed before. You know? Hey, that's, a, hey that, that's something to be thankful for. <laughs> Second, although they took my bill for, they did not take my life. Hey, thankful for that. Because although they took my all, it was not that much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not someone else. Think about it. If you get robbed, I know you're going to go crazy. You're going to be complaining. You're going to be praying to God, complaining to God. Why did that happen to me, God? Why couldn't it happen to someone next to me? Why couldn't it happen to, you know, that bad guy over there or bad girl over there? But instead, Matthew Henry said, you know, I was raw and thankful that not it wasn't someone else, right? That's a, that's a thankful person, right? When you do not have thankfulness, it just shows your lack of spiritual growth in your life. How many of you guys are really thankful for your parents, thankful for your siblings, thankful for your people around you? I mean... A lot of times, you tend to complain about your parents first, especially people who still live with your parents. That's like the first thing you complain about. Oh, my parents are too strict. My parents don't have enough money. You know, my parents, you know, they're not that fun. My parents always lectures me, right? But have you ever thought about, you know, the care that they give for you, the kindness, you know, everything that they've done in your life. I mean, if you don't, then you're worse than an animal, right? Animals are thankful for their parents, right? But you, on the other hand, you like to be complainers. Psalms 104 tells us that, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. How many of you guys, when you come into church, you're always praising God. You're glad to be here. Thank God that I'm here, right? And I see, you know, Brother Dave, right? And I don't know how he is outside the church, right? But inside the church, he's smiling and he's genuinely love to praise God, right? I'm not trying to lift him up, but this is what I see. But rest of you guys, 
you come in here, a lot of times you have lack of sleep when you come to church. And that's on you. It's not God's fault. It's not my fault. It's not pastor's fault. It's your fault. You should sleep earlier the night before, right? There's a solution right there. I mean, what do you have to come? I mean, you're doing some stupid stuff on your computer, on TV, all night, on Saturday night, and you come Sunday morning all tired. And I don't think you would do that to a place where you know it's special to you. That just shows your ingratitude towards God. You're like, coming to God, I know you saved me. It's all good. You know, I'm not going to hell. You know, I, you know, I just show you my minimum respect by going to church. You know, that's your attitude. And then you look at yourself, constantly looking at the clock, constantly looking at your watch. Oh, man, I'm losing time. You know, if pastor's preaching. He should end at 11.30 sharp, you know. I got to go out there and eat some food. I got to go out there and have some fellowship. Instead of concentrating on praising God, you're constantly concentrating, I mean, concentrating on your selfishness and your own pleasure. So number one, I mean, that was our introduction. But first point is, you know, you should be thankful for perseverance of your pastor and pastor's wives. You don't hear it too much, right? You know. You are where you are, of course, by grace of God, mercies of God, right? Because of the word of God, because you're saved. However, you're where you are because of pastors and their wives, right? I mean, how thankful are you, right? I mean, it's given. When we do testimony, we always say, you know, thank God for his salvation. Of course. You know, thank God for his word. Of course. But how many of you guys ever say thank God for pastor and pastor's wives, right? That just shows you how baby you are as a Christian. Each day, certain things that you should be thankful for, right? You know, thank God that you're still alive. You have opportunity to praise God, right? Salvation, of course, the word of God. Thank God that you could pray. But do you ever consistently, every day, thank God for the perseverance of pastors and pastor's wives? You know, it's not something that's, you know, preached a lot. It's not something that's, you know, touched a lot because pastors themselves aren't going to talk about it. You know? Pastor Shrive's not going to come up there, hey, you know, have you been thankful for me? You know, I mean, I mean majority of you guys would think that, oh, he's a proud guy, you know, right away. You know, that's how wicked you are. But thank God that I have the opportunity. And from a third-person perspective, I could tell you, right? Are you really thankful for the pastor and pastor's wives. You know, pastors are strong usually. Why? Because, you know, they know the calling and they're out there. They know that, you know, whatever happens, you know, God's going to give them strength to go through. However, pastor's wives are a different story. Who do you think devil attacks the most? Do you think devil attacks pastor the most? Maybe. But to me, devil attacks pastor's wives more. If pastor's wives fall... It's easy for pastor to fall. Imagine if pastor wives don't want to continue in the ministry, don't want to go out there with the pastor and support him. You know how hard it's going to be for pastor? Even with the full support in a Bible-believing ministry, it's the hardest thing. Because devil wants this church to be gone. Yeah, gone. I mean, how many souls do you think get saved because of the ministry of our pastor's? and the church, and their wives. You should really consider yourself like a really wicked person if you haven't been praying for pastor and pastor's wives, right? I know that you pray for yourself all the time. You may be praying for your wife because you don't want to get into fight all the time or you want some warm food at night, right? I know you may be praying for your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, and your loved ones, right? But you always neglect and refuse to pray for the leaders. I mean, someone who's actually leading local church. A lot of times, splits happen inside the church because they're unthankful for their pastor and pastor's wives. Why? They think that they could do better. They think that, you know, this thing, ah, he made a mistake. 
that just tells me that you're perfect. I mean, God uses pastors and their wives to lead the church. And as long as, I mean, I've been with our church for over 20 years, I mean, God has led the church step by step using, you know, men of God and women of God. And you're telling me, you're telling everyone, I'm better than God. I mean, if God uses those people to preach the word, lead the church, but you have complaints against them, ultimately, whose complaints is it towards? Is it towards them? No, it's towards God. I mean, so think, think before you start having a murmuring heart, complaining heart toward pastor and pastor's wife. Nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Only perfect person ever to live on earth was Jesus Christ. So everybody makes mistakes. However, you look at the heart of the people. God uses people who have the right heart. There's always up and down, right? I always get amazed when people, including myself, you make all the mistakes in the world, but when you see pastor or pastor wife make that one little mistake, you jump all over it. And you kick that dead horse over and over and over. I mean, every time like some conversation comes up, you're like, man, can you, man, I can't believe that, you know, he misspelled the name. I can't believe that, you know, she misplaced the period at the end. I can't believe that, you know, he actually, you know, I mean, he actually passed gas as a human being, right? I mean, that's how pitiful people can get. I can't believe that he did not say hi to me, you know? I can't believe the way he looked at me. I can't believe the way she looked at me. You know? At the end of the day, ungrateful, unthankful people are all about themselves. And especially in a Bible-believing church, when so many souls are on their way to hell in these last days, you should be praying for your pastors and pastor's wife more and more, and you should be more than ever thankful. Because imagine, you know, if they're not here, where would you be? I mean, are you going to just look at YouTube all the time? That's not going to work, right? Are you going to drive eight hours, seven hours to a bible building church near you? I know you're not going to do it, right? Then why don't you be thankful and be thankful for your pastor and pastor's wives, not just today because you heard this message or you hear it like once in a while, you know, during Jubilee. Be thankful for them every day. I mean, that just shows you and that will make you, for those of you who had complaints in your heart against pastor, pastor's wives or pastor's family, like, oh man, you know, I was wrong. You know? I mean, God's using that family, you know, as a whole you know, to do God's work. A lot of times people who can't follow, a lot of times people who always wants to be that alpha dog, you know, who wants to be a leader, right? You know, they can't, they hate authority. I'm sorry, if you can't follow authority, you can't really follow Jesus Christ, right? Why are you here then? Just go out there and have your own fun, right? If you had the freedom to go anywhere, where would you be today? Especially for young people, right? I mean, would you be partying over there? You know. I mean, would you be, you know, spending your time at the beach, at the mountains, doing something? You know, just be ungrateful for what God has done for you, right? And then just spend your own time and everything. It is very sad to see when people don't come to church, those who've been coming to church for a long time, and their reason is because what pastor said, you know, what pastor's wife said. It's, it's very pitiful, right? So then have you been always following them because of who they are? Or have you been following because what God has done through them? If you trust God, if you believe that God is using you know, pastor and pastor's wife, you'll be thankful and follow. You know, like blind faith, right? Faith is something that you can't see. You're here because of something. 
then why don't you do it with glad heart and with thanksgiving instead of grumbling heart and murmuring? Right? And he goes, I mean, if you can't be thankful for pastor, pastor five, of course you're not going to be thankful for anybody else. And if you can't be thankful for God's people, I'm sure you ain't, you're not going to be thankful for anything else. So he starts from the top. So are you really thankful for your pastor and pastor's wives? Just remember that a lot of people are thankful for their pastors, but they're not really thankful for their pastor's wives. Why? Because pastor's wives, you know, like tells you things that you don't want to hear, especially like girls, right? If pastor told you to do it, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. But if pastor wife does it, you're like, oh, I can't do it. You know, who does she think she is, right? I mean, your mentality is wrong, right? I mean, when in the judgment seat of Christ, they're going to get the same reward for supporting them, right? I mean, they had to endure the same thing, right? If it's a word where Pastor Shrive goes to Mr. Shrive, oh, go tell this girl, Jane, you know, you know, it's time to lift up your skirt a little bit. I mean, I mean, drop your skirt a little bit, right? I'm checking if you guys are paying attention. Okay, drop your skirt, you know, cover the, you know, skins a little bit. Like, oh, who is she to tell me what to do, you know? But they just don't understand, you know? They don't come out of nowhere and tell you what to do, right? Of course, pastor prays, tells the pastor's wife, you know, maybe you'll connect better as, you know, woman, right? For those little pitiful things, you guys, as a Christian, are such a baby. Me included. We need to get out of it. We need to really get right with the Lord. Because the reason you and I are listening to this message is because deep in our heart, there might be something where you were, you know, ungrateful, where there's a complaining heart inside of you, you know, towards pastor or pastor's wife. You have to get rid of it. I've never seen people who were against pastor and pastor's wives, you know, live a happy life. They don't live happily ever after. They usually get destroyed sooner or later. I mean, you've seen Dr. Ruckman's story. I'm sure Pastor Shrive could tell you a story. Pastor Kim, you know, Pastor Cash Shrive could tell you stories. People who go against Bible-believing pastors and their family, God will not take it lightly. I will destroy them. If that's you, then you'll be destroyed. Simple as that. You know, it's from the history. Learn from the history. And you ought to be thankful not only for your pastors and pastors' wives, you ought to be thankful for your partners, your physical partners and your spiritual partners. Of course, you have to be thankful for your husbands and wives. You know, many days go by where you take each other for granted. You know, someone that God has given you. You have to be more thankful for them, right? You could be thankful more each day because you appreciate them more each day. Right? I mean, if your height of thankfulness for your spouse is here and it doesn't grow and it only goes down, then something's wrong with your, you know, marriage, right? It's something that you and your husband and wife ought to be more appreciative of each other, be more thankful for each other, because they're your other half. Do you want your other half to be suffering, right? I guarantee you, if I tell you I'm going to burn half of your body, you got to be, no, 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 no way. But if I tell you I'll burn another person, okay, you know, I'm not hurt, right? But as partners, you guys are intertwined. You're one. I mean, when, when your partner is hurt, are you hurt? You know, when they're happy, are you happy? You know, I mean, something that you have to do every day. Or else that's why so many, you know, marriages, you know, end up in divorce. I mean, they say statistically 50%. I mean, who knows? Probably it's growing and growing as... Younger and more, you know, younger, a newer generation gets married early. 
that seems to be a trend nowadays. Not at our church, but you know, generally speaking, you see like a lot of kids in their 20s getting married now. But majority of them, more than 50%, end up in divorce. Why? Do you think they're really thankful for each other? No. If you are genuinely thankful for your partner, you, know, you really do care for them. Just like the Lord cared for the church. And that's a physical partner, right? But what about spiritual partners, right? Those are people around you, behind you, next to you, in front of you. Do you are you really thankful for people, every person in this room? Right? Or are you like type of person, man, I wish she wasn't here today. I wish he wasn't here today. Oh, man. I was going to have a great day until she showed up like 10 minutes after church started. Or well, like 15 minutes after he showed up, you know. Why? I mean, why would you be unthankful for your brethren? You're going to see them for eternity, right? I mean, are you not going to see them for all eternity? You are. I mean, you should be, you know, thankful for everybody in this room. If you have hard time being thankful for them, Ask the Lord to love him through you, like Romans 5. Ask the Lord. Maybe it's your heart is like so cold because you're full of ingratitude, right? Maybe the Lord has to break that heart so that he can show you the love that you should have for your brethren. I mean, nobody's perfect. Again, everybody has their shortfalls. But one thing that you could do is you could always pray for the brethren, right? Not because you are so critical of them. Oh, Lord God, you know, I hate, you know, how he behaves, you know. Just punish that person, you know. Or like, I don't want them to come to our church anymore, right? Not that kind of prayer. I mean, genuine love, right? You know, through preaching, through Bible study, through fellowship, you know, you want them to get right with the Lord. You know, restore that fellowship if you haven't had that fellowship for the longest time. So you should be thankful for your pastors, pastor's wife. You should be thankful for your partners, and your physical partners, as well as your spiritual partners. And, I mean, due to time, you know, I'm going to go to the last point. I Actually, you know, a lot of times I preached like one or two points, but today I had like seven or eight points, but I have to skip it. Last point is that you should be thankful for perfect timing of God. You know, Romans 8, 28 says, well, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are to call according to his purpose. You have to be thankful for God's perfect timing. You know, you and I, we always are in a hurry. You know, God does not have same, you know, timing like us. He tends to wait, right? Then you should be thankful for God's perfect timing. Whether, you know, it's your work, whether it's your school, whether it's your health, whether anything in your life, you should be thankful that God, you have a perfect timing in my life. I know I don't have this today because it's not the right timing. I know you know, I'm going through this because it's your perfect timing. You have to be thankful for God's perfect timing. When you have that kind of assurance, when it comes to God's timing and his perfect timing, you know, there's no reason for you to be worrying about anything in your life. Honestly. Especially if you are living, you know, diligent, doing your best life. You know, and then you can't be living, you know, unbalanced life. You can't be lazy. You can't be, you know, someone who expect God to, you know, you know, shower you with, you know, Benjamins, you know, out of the blue, right? No, you work your best. You do your best. You work hard, and then you have right relations with the Lord, and then you're just thankful for God's perfect timing. It just tells you that, wow, I don't need to worry. You know, I don't need to worry about the past. I don't need to worry about present. I don't need to worry about future because. You know, God's timing is perfect. I could rely on his timing for it. If you truly, truly want to get right with the Lord, you should really check your 
you know, spiritual thermometer when it comes to Thanksgiving. Well, are you really thankful? I mean, I didn't go over a lot of stuff. There's only three things. You know, besides from, you know, obvious things, right? Like your salvation, word of God, right? Are you really thankful for your pastor and pastor's wife? Are you really thankful for your physical partner and spiritual partner? Are you thankful for God's perfect timing? 